Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Sometimes the haste with which one acts because I was downstairs, Mr. Speaker, when the member for Miku South referred to me as his good friend and he's sorry that I was absent. So I indeed, Mr. Speaker, had to make myself present and I will make a contribution, albeit extremely brief, extremely brief, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, before he leaves, ask him how many hotel rooms he built either when he was Minister of Tourism or Prime Minister. Ten years. In ten years, in ten years, the leader of the opposition being in cabinet and in government together with your humble servant, seized with the responsibility of overseeing tourism in this country. How many hotels did he build? And I can bring Hansard to you, Mr. Speaker, on one occasion, on one occasion he outlined 13 hotels that would be constructed under his watch as Minister of Tourism. As Prime Minister, is the same thing, a lot of talk, talk, talk. And I could tell you, Mr. Speaker, a summation of the period when he was Minister of Tourism and Prime Minister for the aggregate 10 years, Pa Memo Kai Pool, Ife. Oh, we Ife Le Shui Shuval, Ipafe Hotel. Not one hotel room. And Mr. Speaker, you will not believe that during the period 2006 to 2011, when the leader of the opposition was Minister of Tourism, his budget, his budgetary allocation to ensure that he engineered new tourism practices to bring more people to our shores, you would not believe was never under $45 million. Let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. For the five years he spent as Minister of Tourism, his allocation was no less than $45 million. What did he take that money to do, Mr. Speaker? Subsidize foreign airlines. For, subsidize for, foreign airlines, boxing in paradise, all sorts of activities that brought no return to this country. Today, he's a tourism guru. Today, he's a tourism guru, Mr. Speaker. And you know what? With all that money, he subsidized all airlines apart from Liat. Apart from Liat. Because he does not believe in indigenous people or in. He, he, yes, he brought American Eagle to compete with Liat. Those are the deeds of this man. So when you hear him speak, today he praises village tourism which I like, I love the concept, the average Tom, Dick and Harry in every part of this country can make meaningful participation in the tourism industry and can earn a tourism dollar from their neck of the woods. So you go to canneries where they have cassava, it, becomes, it will become a, a, a cassava heaven. Do it in there. You go to library, what, what do you have in library? The charm and everything. <laughs> you go and get the library charm. Ancillary, Fish Friday, Grocery. So every area, persons can capitalize on that, Mr. Speaker. Guess what? They were doing it with jazz as well. They were doing it with jazz as well. What did he do with jazz? He placed jazz at the hotels. He placed jazz and the tourism dollar that was brought about through jazz in the hands of the elitist tourism industry people. Not for participation by locals, Mr. Speaker. And today, you want to come and talk that kind of foolishness, Mr. Speaker. It's really unfair. It's really, really unfair, Mr. Speaker. And then you hear him talk about the Deputy Speaker and the Constitution says, the man was in Trinidad, where he opened his mouth and he said the opposition is part of government. Is part of government and I'm downstairs eating, Mr. Speaker, and I'm fuming 
So in Trinidad, they are part of government because they want to form an association to approach all lending institutions. But today, the opposition is not part of government because it's convenient to speak from one side of his mouth at one point and the other side at a different point. How can you trust anything this man says? How can you trust it? Oh, we are part of government, we need to be heard. We are part of government. But for the appointment of a deputy speaker, it serves the narrative to say you are not part of government. And then talk about, you know, you wrote the various agencies and disciplines and this and that about contemplating a breach of the constitution. This was the very man, Mr. Speaker, when he was told he breached the constitution by convening parliament in excess of 30 days after a general election, what was his response? The constitution stipulates no sanctions so he can do as he please. That's what he said. That is what he said about a blatant breach of the constitution. And today, nobody has told you, nobody has given you an iota of an idea that we will, we will breach the constitution. You're already writing in contemplation. A man who blatantly breached the con constitution with total impunity. So, Mr. Speaker, and then he went on talking about we were against investors. Mr. Speaker, I want to say this, and I'm asking the Honorable Prime Minister, the member from Miku, from Castries East, to permit me at this point to breach cabinet secrecy. The Prime Minister has always indicated to his ministers never, ever, ever blame the beneficiary of a good deal. He has always said so. He has said to us, you don't blame anybody who got a good deal at the hands of a prime minister. Blame the person who facilitated it. So nobody has been against Cabot. I have never for once been against Cabot. Never. I have been against the mechanisms that were used in my view to unjustly enrich Cabot. That is my position. I have no difficulty, absolutely none, with a for and he speaks of foreign. Which of those people are foreign direct investors? Which of them are foreign direct investors? Persons come from Canada. We lend them our pensioners' money to buy property in our country. And you call them foreign direct investors? How can they be? And I'm not blaming Cabot. I'm blaming the facilitator. Mr. Speaker, I can say this. For Jazz last year, I met the owner of the Dire Mall who bought it from government. And he was bold enough to say to me, Mr. Richard, you are a businessman. If it's you that get up, why you would have take it too? This is what he told me. He referred to the deal as a boy. Member for Castle Central, <laughs> I do appreciate the history. But I'm hoping at some point in time, your contribution even slightly collides with the motion. Yes, definitely, Mr. Speaker. That is why initially I said that this bill is intended to bring reprieve. The motion, sorry, is intended to bring reprieve to each and every person in this country, no matter where you may find yourself, and to partake in the distribution of the tourism dollar. But you see, Mr. Speaker, it was is the fact that the member from Miku South made some allegations that are totally incorrect. Totally incorrect, Mr. Speaker. And he talk about training. He talk about training. Mr. Speaker, yes, we have to train our people to be prepared to embrace the tourism industry wholeheartedly and the tourism product. I understand that, but when you tell me that a minister of finance would put one school in his budget, one school, CHTTI, a private school, finds itself in our national budget to be funded by taxpayers, funded by taxpayers, owned by the wife of a member of parliament owned by the wife of a member of parliament but the funding is on our books the, the 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 expense to be shouldered by us and then you talk about training mr speaker how can there be egalitarianism how can there be equality how can there be 
how can how how would there would there not be conflict of interest and so one set of people were being trained and you know what mr speaker they still left the bills for this government to pay if i'm correct they still left the bills for us to pay notwithstanding those persons who may have been trained for the hospitality hospitality industry were given tags of a political flavor and those are the realities mr speaker so mr speaker i just want to do but he has run out obviously i <laughs> i wanted to make the point that you know with all the expertise and experience as minister of tourism you did not build one room as prime minister you did not build one room you know you do absolutely nothing to enhance our tourism product and you cannot stand here and basically mr speaker you know the jazz jazz is a derivative of tourism or jazz essentially is a pivot around which tourism revolves when you take that and you centralize it what are you doing are you not taking the whole concept of village tourism away from the jazz activity mr speaker are you not but obviously when you have it in Masha and Soufre and Ancillary and Canaries and Deriso, even in his constituency there was jazz. There was jazz. But under his watch, he centralized it, Mr. Speaker. So Mr. Speaker, this government, in every policy that is rolled out, one can see quite clearly, quite blatantly, the interest of the average St. Lucian being taken cognizance of and we are doing whatever we can to facilitate the growth of our people. That having been said, Mr. Speaker, I support the motion.